Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Let's Develop Code Hunt. Today I'm not going to make progress in the game, but instead I'm going to switch to the C sharp side and reason a little about uh, the skill rating metrics and how to solve these tasks uh, in a C sharp way. Um, so maybe we can understand in the future how uh, these levels are intended to solve. Because as I told you before, um, the the Java version of this game is actually implemented by directly translating my Java solutions into C sharp solutions, then compiling these C sharp solutions and evaluating them. So in the background, sometimes there happen strange things because of this translation process, and uh, of course. There are some uh, C sharp language features available uh, that we don't have in Java, and uh, therefore the solutions we can write in C sharp differ greatly from the solutions we can write in Java. And I think that this is at least part of the reason why we sometimes have to resolve to uh, stranger uh, solutions to get the full skill rating, like my recursive solutions in the loop sector. Anyways, um, let's jump right into it. I just opened the first tasks of sector two, uh, the loop sector. And uh, as you can see here, the task was just to uh, generate an array uh, that contains the first n numbers starting from zero. And uh, actually, in Java, I wrote, implemented this with the loop, and I even got the full skill rating for that. But uh, in C-sharp, I can write this in a more elegant way. And we're going to have a look at that. So I switch to C-sharp. Uh, it actually messes up the switching. This is still my Java code. So I have to leave the level ones, enter it again. And now there's uh, the actual C-sharp version. At least I think so. Um, I'm just going to try it. So remember that what I want to do is generate this array of the first n integer numbers. So what I'm going to do in C sharp, oh, I lost the keyboard focus, and is say enumerable, because there's a helper class, say range from 0 to n, and just generate an array from this range. So of course, this does not work out yet. This doesn't compile because I did not specify where the, to take this enumerable form. And this is actually the first thing that's interesting here because I'm going to import link. Um, link is a C -sharp, part of the C sharp uh, default library. Link stands for language integrated query language. Um, so it was intended to query data sets which uh, you can see, so it's very, very similar to something like SQL, um, where you can do selects and mappings and uh, stuff like that. And you can do this in the, in the C-sharp language directly if you import this uh, system link package, or namespace rather. And uh, actually this enumerable class where we can create ranges is part of this link uh, library. So we just created the range of the numbers from 0 to n and converted it to an array. And this is, of course, the most elegant solution we can get for this level. So let's step on. You're still on the, on the C-sharp side. So what I'm going to do now, uh, this time my task is to implement, I think, the first n uh, multiples of 3, I guess. So. Again, I'm going to enumerable dot range. This time I'm adding the import immediately. I'm going to do enumerable dot range from 0 to n. And I'm going to say select because this now now we're in the uh, in the SQL like part. But actually, this is uh, also very similar to functional programming. So I just have a number, 
and I have a, a range of numbers generated here and for every number I have I'm going to se uh, select uh, three times that number so this is just a mapping and I'm going to say to array no actually he should be able to do that himself okay no he is not so I have to add the array thing myself but actually that was not my solution yet ah so this is actually n times e here but that's a quick fix and now we capture the solution okay let's switch to a different level i just jumped to level uh, 2.6 uh, which is one of those string uh, analytics levels where i resolved to uh, using the length method actually to come up with a correct result so just to remind you our task was to count the number of a's in the string s uh, which i did by replacing all the strings by nothing and then comparing or subtracting the new length from the old length which is just the difference of course just the number of a's um, in a c-sharp way to do this i'm just going to try to switch now again it doesn't work so I go out and in Currently nobody uses that feature at Microsoft, so somehow there's already a solution here, but I'm going to uh, implement this the way I intended it with, uh, with the link extension. So because what I can do here in C Sharp, I can use the string as an enumerable. It's an enumerable of characters, and I can say count the characters where the character equals a so I have just I, I call the count function and the count will run over the enumerable and uh, it will count everything uh, that fulfills this condition this is just a lambda expression so it will pass every character of the string in here and I'm checking whether this character equals to a and if it does it will count it so this is just the number of a's in the string let me quickly compile that, see if I get everything right. Looks good. It's counting the A's. Apparently it's compiling. It's taking quite some time, but this should be the correct solution. So as you can see, this makes things considerably easier. I don't have to resolve to any uh, strange things like recursion or this length comparison. I can just use the language features that implicitly do some looping stuff. Uh, and this actually solves uh, the problem at hand. So let's look at yet another level. I uh, just switched to 3.1 where the task was to actually calculate a number to the power of power. Uh, as you can see here, uh, I solved this task uh, with recursion. Um, but we can write this in a more easy way actually in, in C sharp so I don't have to resolve to recursion at all. Let's see how that goes. So if I switch to the C sharp version, um, of course I'm going to import system.link again and uh, then I'm going to do the following. I'm going to say enumerable, enumerable dot range and I'm going to take the range from 1 to power which is the number of times I want to multiply n with itself and then I'm going to use something called aggregate and aggregate takes two parameters the first is the initial value I'm going to start with with which is 1 because uh, if, if I don't do any steps here if power is 0 then I want to return 1 and then it takes a function or a lambda expression that actually aggregates two numbers. So the first number is my aggregate and the second number is just my count. So it's, uh, it's the number from this range. And what I'm going to do here 
is that for every time this is called, I'm going to multiply the aggregate with my number. And this is exactly uh, what the power function does. And as you can see, this easy, easily generated me the full score points uh, for this level without, uh, without having to resolve to strange measures like uh, the recursive uh, function calls. So let's have a look at another example, which is uh, sector 3, uh, task 6. Um, the uh, task here was actually to uh, replace a string with a number of characters by a string that has a name num same number of underscores divided by a space and I resolved to uh, again a recursive function call here to uh, solve this task in Java but actually in C sharp we can do it a little more elegant and I also think a little more readable so let's see how that goes so okay, we again arrived in C sharp land, and um, I'm going to import system link as I did before, because now I'm going to do that in two two steps. The first thing I, I want to do is um, convert the string to underscores, to an array of underscores actually. So I'm going to take the word, and I'm just going to t say select. So again, it's, it's iterating over the characters in the string and I'm going to replace every character in the string by an underscore. And I'm going to do two array because this is going to return an enumerable and I want it to have an array. Um, and then the second step, I'm going to use a method called on the, on the class string. It's a static method called join where it can give in a separator string and an array of characters underscores and it's going to join these underscores by the separator character which is exactly what I want to have here and uh, I can compile that and I'm pretty sure that this is the correct solution and I'm also guessing at getting the best skill rating for this solution which is actually quite descriptive if you get used to this uh, lambda expression style of writing in C sharp. And yes, I solved the task and I got the full skill rating. In fact, I just figured that we can improve this even because I think uh, the C sharp compiler is able to do an implicit cast here. So probably, yes. Uh, we can write this in an even shorter way, uh, saying just we select, we map the w characters of the word each to an underscore, and we're going to join this uh, collection of underscores, this innumerable of underscores we create here just by uh, a space, and this creates us the string we want. Okay. I, I, now I showed you in this episode a couple of uh, solutions in C Sharp to the task we solved in Java before and I hope you got a little insight in what C Sharp is able to do. Uh, it's actually quite similar to Java but then again it's not because it has all these, these link extensions and especially the Lambda expressions that make it possible to uh, express a lot of things a little more elegant and less verbose. And um, I think they actually make this game much easier because with these kind of functional uh, extensions you can use, uh, you can implement the tasks with a lot less code, which makes it easier to get the full skill rating. So this is the reason, in, in my opinion, why we sometimes or oftentimes struggle to get the uh, best skill rating with a Java solution because we just don't have these uh, these tools at hand, these neat little functions we can use uh, to select or summarize or aggregate or count or whatever. Um, and since Microsoft uh, rates these uh, tasks, having these uh, the usage of such things in mind, which make the code much shorter, it's really hard to write in 
equivalently short solution in Java. Okay, that's it for this special episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you get something out of it. Maybe some insights into C Sharp. Uh, maybe some inspiration or uh, maybe you want to play around with C Sharp a bit. Uh, if you don't have to use Visual Studio, uh, but can use uh, some something like Mono or stuff, uh, it actually makes fun to play around with C Sharp. I think it's a nice language. And yes, this concludes my episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, consider joining my channel, uh, subscribe, or follow me on Twitter or on my Google Plus page uh, to get updates on more. See you around.